Hey y'all, welcome back to the Daily AMG and happy Tuesday. So I'm bringing you a tag video today and today I am doing the library 411 tag. There are 13 questions and these all have to do with your library, which I personally love my library. So I was excited to see this tag going around. So let's get started. I have Okay, question number one, information desk, a book that was helpful to you for any reason. I am going to go with Braving the Wilderness by Brene Brown. I know I have talked a lot about this book, but it is truly a life-changing book. Some of the things that she says and the way that she says it puts things into such a new perspective. Even though it shouldn't be a new perspective, it should be it should be common sense. It should be second nature. But unfortunately, people are very hurtful towards one another. And there's a lot of hate in this world. It was about everything in a way that just makes it so accessible and so eye opening. And to where you feel like moving forward, you can just spread love and be a better person and try to be the change that you want to see in such a a real way. It's just so good. Question number two. The return bin. What are two books you read and immediately wanted to return because you did not like them or a recent DNF? I don't know. I really don't have anything. I can't think of anything that I've recent. I've had this DNF conversation and I've still not DNF'd anything. I'm not saying that I haven't put things down because I wasn't in the mood for them. Because that definitely happens. I mean, I'm up to like 50 currently reading on Goodreads. But as far as cracking it open and immediately knowing, nope, this is not for me. I think the last time I did that was maybe like Beautiful Bastard. And I, I didn't even put it on Goodreads because it was like an immediate like, just kidding. This is definitely not for me. Now, if it's for you, knock yourself out. I'm not meaning to be offensive in any way. If you have a book in your hand, I don't care what it is. As long as you like it, get after it. It just wasn't for me. I really can't think of anything off the top of my head. Oh, well, I'll get better about DNFing. <laughs> Number four, community classes and study rooms. A book you loved that was assigned in school. I think obvious answer is going to be To Kill a Mockingbird for me because I know I've said that it's one of my most favorite books several times on this channel at this point. I don't remember reading something in school and hating it. I read a few books in high school that weren't um, required reading. However, in some schools they may be. Two of those that I can think of right off the bat are The Catcher in the Rye and The Perks of Being a Wallflower. Both of those, I think, have even been banned from some schools, and then some schools have them as required reading. I would definitely say those ought to be 100% required reading, and I can't think of anything that I didn't like. I liked it all, because I really... I don't know about your school system, but my school system really tried, it kind of centered around like mid-century, post-war, that kind of era, which, you know, I love it. So, yeah, basically anything that took place, early 20th century literature, I'm so there for. <laughs> All right, number five, computers. A modern classic you love or a favorite sci-fi? So I'm going to say modern favorite is obviously Harry Potter. I think that's like a total given and I just had to throw in Harry Potter for you. But also I am going to answer both questions because my favorite sci-fi at the current is Ready Player One. I was completely, completely just gobsmacked by this book. 
I picked it up because it was becoming a movie and I wanted to see the movie and I don't like to see a movie not having read the book if there is a book readily available. I know sometimes things are like adapted very loosely, etc., which ended up being how this one was because <sighs> that movie was terrible. So mad. I'm so mad. I thought about coming home and doing a video that night. I probably should have done a reaction video that night because my husband and I both read the book like a few weeks prior to going to see the movie and we just sat there like, what are we watching? What is, what is this? This, this is not that. Ah, oh, oh, it made me so mad. Okay. Number six, DVD rentals. Your most anticipated or favorite in recent history book to movie or book to TV adaptation or a book that felt cinematic or a book you wish would be adapted into a movie or TV series. I would really love to see them redo 112263. I know, I'm sorry, and I love James Franco. That could be controversial. Um, I like him as an actor, and I thought that it was good in, until it just wasn't. And, and it made me really kind of just totally bummed out. Recently, my husband and I stumbled upon Bosch which is based off of the Harry Bosch series by Michael Conley. That is like, I mean, it's like, uh, it's a huge mystery series and it's on Amazon Prime and it is outstanding, outstanding, pretty much goes like, it's not one of those like, verbatim but you're like jiving with it and there's really nothing that's totally just thrown in and you're like but why like ready player one i'm still bitter another book that i would love to see adapted is how to find love in a bookstore i wrote that on my blog so if that kind of rings a bell to you if you're a blog reader then i totally had this whole desire written out on my blog because after I read it I was just like if this could be turned into a movie a la love actually it would be so wonderful magical amazingness so maybe they should get on that get on that all right let's see here number seven library bookstore slash book sale a random you nope a random book you picked up without knowing anything about it and really enjoyed or show off your favorite book merch. Huh? Okay, those, I, I don't have any book merch, like, at the ready. Um, a book that I picked up at a library book sale and didn't really know anything about it, I do that all the time. I have a haul right here of books that, for the most part, I haven't really heard anything about. I mean, some of them I have, but others, I'm just like, oh, that looks cute. Or I know that author. I would say the last book that I picked up that I maybe didn't know that it was a thing would be The Devil in the White City. And that was fantastic. I love that. I'll do a whole review on that. I need to catch up on reviews. I promise I need... I, I need to work on that because I have so many books I've read that I want to just do like five minute fast reviews on or 10 minute reviews. Just something that is like, here's the plot. Here's some of the character development or whatever. And here's like my ratings and blah, blah, blah. That's it. It's in the works. It's in the works. All right. Number eight, teen slash youth room. Favorite YA or favorite book you read as a kid, or a book you can't wait to share with your future kids slash nieces and nephews. <whistles> Dang, these questions are getting lengthy. Um, okay, wow, what was the first question? <laughs> favorite YA, um, I don't know. 
probably My Lady Jane. That was so good. I cannot wait for My Plain Jane. It's going to be outstanding. I've got to read Jane Eyre before this. like, And I think that comes out like next month. Or this month? Today? I don't know. Oh, gosh. Um, okay, so then uh, books you read as a kid. I, I read so many books as a kid. Uh, books you can't wait to share with your future kids, nieces, or nephews. All of them. All of them. I just, I really want to get books in those little hands. So, number nine. Museum tickets. A book that made you feel a bit more cultured upon completing it. Well, I consider myself to be pretty cultured. Let me think. What is it? Lexi, what's your favorite book? Oh. Goodness. She has lots of favorites. Lots of favorites. Oh, yeah. I like that one, too. One book that does come to mind that I absolutely loved and one thing that I, one of my 2018 book, like goals, bookish goals, I don't really know what, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, she done messed up for her. Uh, one thing was I wanted to read a book that took place on every continent. I would love to get to where I've read a book from every country but maybe not in a year um so i found this book and it was a nonfiction. i love nonfiction, as most of you know at this point and it's called funny in farsi and it is a memoir of growing up iranian in america and it's by Feruze dumas and it was outstanding i believe there might be a second one because my Goodreads says this is number one, and I wasn't aware of that till I just saw that. So, it what is? Okay, so, and that one came out in 2004, so it's been a while. Um, the second one came out in 2008, and it's called Laughing Without an Accent, Adventures of an Iranian American at Home and Abroad. Oh, I would love that. Okay, so, yay, now I found a new book. I added it to my want to read, you know, just like the other bazillion books. But that one was so captivating and interesting, and I love immigrant stories, so I, I just loved that. Number 10, Overdrive slash Hoopla, an audiobook you love. Okay, if you're new here, I read like 87% of books via audio. So this is a little hard for me to say, I mean, I, I will definitely do an entire, I'll do a couple top five Fridays of favorite audio because I have a vast library of audiobooks that I can definitely tell you all kinds of recommendations from, from all of it. Number 11, request a purchase. A lesser known book that you want more people to know about and to read. All the books go beyond the New York Times bestseller list go to your used bookstores go to the depths of your library book sales there are some incredible books that people really hard to get into people's hands and I feel like sometimes you only hear about like this top 10% of this iceberg of incredibly talented people and it just makes me really sad. Something that I read that like nobody has heard of. <laughs> That's going to be like all my books. One book that I feel like I never heard anything else about from like my IRL reader friends and even really on booktube is The Heart's Invisible Furies by John Boyne. That was an incredible, incredible book. <sighs> But I read a lot of nonfiction and I read a lot of maybe like not, not within that top 10%. I definitely read in that top 10%. Hello. 
I would really like to hear more people gush about Beatrice Williams. I really love her. She's historical fiction, and I don't feel like I see a lot on YouTube about her, and that just may be that I'm looking in the wrong place, or however that works. Um, okay, yeah, we could really be here all day with that question. Number 12. Librarians, a character who loves helping others. The first thing that I thought of was Precious, number one ladies detective agency. So good. I love this series. I need to read more of the series. I need to, to, to really like binge that series. In my haul, actually, I have like number 14. I don't even know how many there are. And I just, as I see them at book sales, I grab them because I know eventually I'll get to it. So I have holes here and there, but I'm trying to get like the full collection. So I use number 13, Sanctuary. A book that is your safety net is like home to you or has helped you through a rough time. I would definitely be remiss to not say the Harry Potter series. This is definitely like a safety net feels like home to me type of series. I can read it. I can just pick it up and read certain passages or certain books. And it just takes me back to my childhood and, and to that time when I was first reading it. Or it just gives you that nostalgia, warm fuzzies that sometimes you just need. It's like a warm hug, you know, from an old friend kind of thing. The other thing that I immediately thought of was a book that I recently read. I actually finished it and then reread it. It's like a coffee table book and it's pretty short. It really touched me. It's by an actress that I love and really has that fun, quirky. She's just such a free spirit. And it's about something that is my biggest passion, and that is entertaining and being a hostess. Nothing makes my heart feel more alive or makes me feel more alive than opening my home and opening my heart and hosting friends and family and being of service to someone. And that was pretty fun by Kate Hudson. This is a book on creating and celebrating a lifetime of tradition and it's really cute. She goes throughout the year and talks about different parties and things that she hosts and how to make it not so stressful on you, which I definitely end up putting far more on myself than I, than I need to, even though it's just my heart is just saying yes, 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 yes to everything and I'll figure out how to make it work and I just want to be able to love on my people and and by serving them food and sitting them down and having great conversation, that's how I love on my people. That is just my love language and so I just thought it was really inspiring because she just seems to be truly so fun and carefree and lives in the moment and so to see that, to see how she carries out the way that she party plans, really, I just, I had to read it twice because it was just such good information. So, yeah, there was a little rant and review and five stars, obviously. So that is the tag. I hope that you enjoyed this. And let me know if you do this tag down below. I would love to watch it because I tag all of you. If you're watching this, you know you're tagged. Thank you so much for watching and please come back for more bookish content from me. Please like this video and subscribe so that you can get notified whenever I post new videos. Like on Friday when I do my top five Friday. Bye!